Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back with all of the fragrances that I wore last week. So I have a lot here because I was testing a bunch of fragrances that I just hauled. So yeah, I've got a ton. I'm going to jump right in. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is one of the travel sprays I picked up. This is Roses de Chloe from Chloe. And I am actually wearing this today or well, I wore it today. I've had to reapply it twice. This one surprisingly does not last well on me. Um, every other Chloe fragrance that I own lasts really, really well. This is the only one that I found that really doesn't. Um, this is a gorgeous fragrance though. It is, um, when I first got it and tested it on paper, it seemed really kind of run of the mill, uh, just really basic, really. And, um, I, like I say, I wore it today and it's really beautiful. It's a really beautiful, fresh, kind of straightforward rose. It's not, um, it's not anything groundbreaking. It, like I say, it's just a very fresh, kind of straightforward rose. It's a realistic rose. It's not synthetic smelling in any way. It's really, really beautiful. So, Roses de Chloe is lychee, bergamot, tarragon, lemon, damask rose, magnolia, cedar, apple, blackcurrant, peach, white musk, amber, and woody notes. Um, it's beautiful. Would I buy a full bottle of it? Probably not. If I came across the bottle for a decent price, I would probably pick it up. And I really do like how it smells. I really do like how it smells on my skin. It just, um, it didn't perform well enough for me to want to purchase a full bottle of it. So. Uh, that is the first one. The second one I tested, oh gosh, this was a total fail. This is Mansara Amber and Roses. And it's funny because when I hauled this, I said there's a dirt smell to it that I don't like, that I smell in the paper. I hope it does something different on my skin. Somebody commented and was like, it's not gonna do anything different on your skin. You're still gonna smell that dirt. And I absolutely did. It was actually worse on my skin than on paper. Um, it really is this kind of rotten dirt smell. It's not good. I don't like this at all. Uh, this is definitely a no-go for me. So, um, Amber and Roses is Sicilian Lemon, Rose, Indian Jasmine, Amber, White Musk, and Labdanum. And I don't know what is giving it that dirt quality. It doesn't have any notes in it that should smell like wet, rotten dirt, but it does. Um, I shouldn't be surprised though. I'm not. A, I'm just not a fan of Mansara or Montel fragrances for the most part. So that was a fail. Um, okay, the next one I wore is. Oh, this one did last a long time though on my skin. Um, I had to scrub it off. So there's that. Um, okay, so the next one I tested out was the Juicy Couture Majestic Woods and. This is a beautiful fragrance. I love this one. This did not do the metallic thing on my skin at all. This ended up drying down to just this beautiful, soft, sweet, almost like a candied oud fragrance. It's really sweet and yummy and beautiful. The only thing with this, and it lasted a really long time, um, I got definitely eight hours out of this easily. The only thing about this one is I would have to be in the mood to wear this. Uh, this isn't something I could wear every single day because it is just a tad cloying. Um, and yeah, like I say, I would really have to be in the mood. So this little travel spray is probably plenty for me. I don't need a full bottle of this. I don't think that might change. I might start wearing it. I might fall even harder in love with it. We'll just have to see. But I think for right now, this little travel is good enough. Okay, the next one I tried is the uh, Juicy Couture Royal Rose, which is from the same line as the Majestic Woods. This one I, I'm not in love with. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not bad by any means. It's just not anything, I don't know. It's just, it's another woody, dark, kind of dirty, musky rose fragrance. Yeah, it's just another really dark, kind of dirt, dirty smelling rose. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. It didn't do anything magic on my skin. There's nothing wonderful about it. Um, I have a hundred other rose fragrances in my collection that I like a lot more than this. I would not purchase a full bottle of it. Um, it's just okay. 
It lasted a long time on my skin though, but it didn't last as long as the Majestic Woods. The Majestic Woods did outperform this one. Okay, the next one I tested was this huge bottle of Vivo Le Juicy La Fleur. Um, this is, I don't even know why, I guess because it's a tester, that's why they had this huge five ounce bottle. But I love this, this is pretty. It's just like super easy breezy, I can smell I can smell some of those kind of watery florals in it. It's crisp and bright smelling. This would be beautiful in the spring and in the heat. I wore this all day one day and I only had to reapply it once, like from morning until when I went to bed. And I could still smell it. And I really wouldn't have even had to reapply it. I just chose to. But I could smell it all day long. This thing went strong. And like I say, it's just this beautiful, light, bright, airy, watery, floral fragrance. Ugh, it's so good. It's slightly sweet, but not really. It's just, oh gosh. Okay, so Viva La Fleur is red berries, mandarin, sorry, mandarin orange, water lily, honeysuckle, gardenia, jasmine, caramel, vanilla, and sandalwood. And it's so good. None of those florals are heavy. None of them are like too, none of them are overpowering or overdone. Everything is just blended really, really beautifully. The caramel and the vanilla are really like um, muted. They're not, it's not overly sweet. It's just a beautiful fragrance. Like I'm so happy I picked this up because I thought for sure for that amount of fragrance for that price that it could not have been a good one. And I just took a chance and I'm so glad I did. So that is uh, Viva Le Juicy Le Fleur. Okay, next we have this Kylie Minogue Couture. And um, I can tell you right now, I do not love this one. This smells like, this smells like straight up cherry Coke on my skin. That's what it smells like. It smells like a fountain drink. Um, and it lasts all of five minutes on me. So this was a no-go for me. Um, so, Couture is Violet, Cherry, Lemon Blossom, Ylang Ylang, Passion Flower, Jasmine, Vanilla Musk, and Cedar. And it's the cherry and the passion flower that give it that kind of like cherry Coke vibe. But that's what it smells like to me is cherry Coke. If you've got skin that would actually hang on to this, it would be probably good because who doesn't like the smell of cherry Coke? But... <laughs> It's just not for me, mostly because it just performed like horribly on me. So anyways, that is Kylie Minogue Couture. Okay, the next one I wore, this is a gorgeous one. This is the Reminiscence uh, Le, Le Notes Gourmands, and this is the Guimauve fragrance. And this is gorgeous. This is like a powdery minty almond fragrance and when I wore this when I actually wore this it was all about the almond it was like a marshmallow like a minty marshmallow almond it was really strong now I over sprayed it to begin with because it just felt like it was one of those fragrances that needed to be over sprayed and it kind of does if you want it to last like a really long time but I went so hard with it that I almost made myself sick like you know I had to get through that couple hours where I just it was like I had too much perfume on and it was cloying because it's a sweet gourmand fragrance so after I got through those couple hours though and it started to kind of um, recede it was beautiful and it lasted all day on my skin like it lasted all day um, I went down to my mom's that day, the day that I wore this, and she lives an hour and a half away, so it got me through the drive down there, my entire visit, and the drive back, and I could it was still going strong. It's just a beautiful fragrance. So, Guimauve is almond, lavender, mint, tangerine, orange, rosemary, green notes, sea notes, bergamot, neroli, pettigrain, jasmine, black pepper, vanilla, tonka bean, musk, sandalwood, ambergris, patchouli, and cedar. It's just a beautiful one. It's, um, like I say, it's like a minty 
almond marshmallow. So that is uh, Guimauve from Reminiscence. And then the last from my haul that I tested is, uh, this is Rumor 2 Rose from Lanvin, and this is gorgeous. This is a grapefruit, super heavy, citrusy grapefruit rose fragrance. It lasts really, really well on the skin for being like a super citrusy rose fragrance, and it's the winter time too that I tested this. It lasted forever, it lasted all day. I did reapply it once, but again, just like with the, um, just like with the Viva La Juicy La Fleur, I reapplied it just because I felt like reapplying it, not because I had to. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be a great one to wear to work because it's gonna be super safe and it's one that I know will get me through my whole work day. So I'm always excited to find a fragrance like that. So uh, Rumor 2 Rose is lemon, orange, grapefruit, bergamot, pear, green notes, rose, magnolia, false jasmine, jasmine, honeysuckle, lily of the valley, musk, patchouli, and amber. And it's gorgeous. It's really all about the citrus and the rose. Mm, I love it. So that is Rumor 2 Rose from Lanvin. Okay, the next one I wore, this is the first one I've really worn this and I wore it to bed just because I felt like smelling like this. Um, and this is Sweet Hope by La Reve. And this is the Hypnotic Poison dupe and this is a good one. I mean, it really does smell. <sighs> It really does smell a lot like hypnotic, po like just like hypnotic poison, really. I mean, very, very close. And it was just nice. I just wanted to smell like this, but I didn't want to put on either of my hypnotic poison, so I grabbed this, which is a really good alternative. And yeah, I couldn't smell it when I woke up the next morning, so it had faded during the night, which means I don't think it's got the greatest longevity, but um you know, it's fine for that kind of use and I'm glad to have it. So uh, this is basically almond and anise and vanilla and jasmine. Um, it's got some spices in there. It's just a good one. If you are somebody who has never smelled hypnotic poison before and you want to know what it smells like before you buy it, definitely go with this one first because it's like 12 bucks and you will really get a good idea of what hypnotic poison is going to smell like before you fork out um, the money for the Dior. So anyways, that is Sweet Hope from La Reve. The next one I finally tested was one of my uh, Zara Emotions or Joe Loves perfumes from Zara. This is the Fleur de Patchouli and this one is beautiful and this one actually um, hung around a lot longer than some of the others. I really, really enjoyed this one. So I only got a few hours out of it still, but it was, it, it did better than some of the others. So uh, Fleur de Patchouli is Peony, Patchouli, and Gayak Wood, which is Oud, and I don't really get the Oud. There's like a nondescript kind of woody, woodiness to it. But to me, it doesn't smell like oud, which is a good thing because if there were oud in one of these fragrances, it would completely overpower it and you wouldn't be able to smell anything else. So anyways, that is Fleur de Patchouli. The next one I wore is another one that I wore to bed. I love this fragrance. I wear it to bed quite often, actually. This is Zara Violet Blossom. And this is one of my favorites from this kind of less expensive Zara line the ones that are like $10 for 30 mil, 9.90 to be exact. Um, I love this one. This really does smell like a cross between Poison Girl and Hypnotic Poison. It's really like, you get that kind of powderiness of the Hypnotic Poison, but you get that kind of intense sweetness of the Poison Girl. It's just really beautiful. So Violet Blossom is Cherry Blossom, Magnolia, and Tonka Bean, and I really, really love this. Some people compare this to Alien. I don't get that. I don't get Alien at all out of this. Um, it's just a yummy, sweet, cozy, like perfect for cold weather and perfect for bedtime kind of fragrance. Doesn't last that long. Um, you'll get a few hours out of this, but you would have to definitely reapply every few hours, like if you wanted to wear it all day. But 
for the price and as for as good as it smells, I'm perfectly happy with it. So that is Zara Violet Blossom. Next, I have a, oh, I love this fragrance and I need to not wear it very often because <laughs> I don't have that much of it left. This is Burberry Brit Red and this is such a stunning fragrance. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. This is such a cozy, like yummy gourmand fragrance. This is one of those, that it doesn't smell like much in the bottle, but once you get it on your skin and it dries down, it becomes, it's just, it's magic, it's magic. So Burberry Brit Red is rhubarb, mandarin, orange, jasmine, ginger, rose, patchouli, vanilla, and benzoin. And it's just a beautiful, bright, yummy gourmand. The rhubarb note in it is so good and it dries down to be just this yummy, cozy, uh, just kind of gourmand fragrance. So anyways, that is Burberry Brit Red. This one lasts, I had to reapply this um, throughout the day. So, but I did, I reapplied it once and it got me through the entire day. And again, usually when I'm at home, I will just reapply fragrance like halfway through the day just to freshen it up and so I can smell it again. But you probably could have still smelled this on me even before I reapplied it. So yeah, this one, um, it's not as good of a performer as a lot of the other Burberrys out there, but it's still, you know, it's still totally decent, six, eight hours. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's Burberry Brit Red. Okay, the next one is a little combination that I put together. Uh, this is Eau Duel from Diptyque, which is a very spicy, dry, woody vanilla. Um, Eau Duel is bourbon vanilla. Oh, hi. <laughs> you silly. You're all red. Because <laughs> I was playing VR. Yeah. Okay, so um, Eau Duel is bourbon vanilla, elemi resin, cardamom, juniper, olibanum, pink pepper, black tea, ambergris, bergamot, saffron, and musk. So you can see it really is like a spicy, dry. Okay, bye now. Okay, bye, baby. Mm -hmm woody vanilla and so and I love wearing it on its own but I love to layer this vanilla with it this is the eau de toilette just Vini from Outremer this you can get at Anthropology for like $18 for this big bottle it's a 1.6 ounce bottle um, and this vanilla it's like oh my gosh it's the most yummy fluffy sweet like cake like vanilla it's so good and it lasts absolutely forever on the skin. Like when I couldn't smell this anymore, oops, when I couldn't smell this anymore, I could still smell this. Um, so I love pairing these because it just adds sweetness to this yummy, like spicy, resinous, dry vanilla. And this one is sweet and yummy. So it just makes this really beautiful sweet spicy resinous dry vanilla so and this combination lasts really really long this doesn't last that well on its own four hours or so out of this one this you could definitely very easily get eight to ten hours out of it lasts forever on me and the combination of them is a winner it lasts all day so anyways that is diptyque au duel as well as uh, Vini from Outremer. Okay, the next one I wore is such a beautiful fragrance. This is Amberlicious from Dewois. Um, this is a clone of Hermes Amber Nargile, and oh my gosh, it's so good. I have since gotten a decant of Amber Nargile in the mail to compare the two. This is about 95% a clone. Um, this has a little bit more cinnamon. Now, mind you, this has had really not had any time to sit and macerate, so I bet after a month, if I come back to this, it will be even better <laughs> than it already is, and it's already amazing. It's just a beautiful, sweet, spicy amber, but like, sweet. It's a really sweet amber. This is the sweetest amber I have in my collection. 
The Hermes Amber Nargule is very sweet too. These, they're very, very close. So I'm really happy to have this. This lasts, this outperforms the Amber Nargule by a million. I mean, this is so much more long lasting. This has an oiliness to it though that the Amber Nargule does not have. So there's that, but I can deal with it because it smells amazing. It lasts forever and I love this fragrance. Amberlicious is so good, but I will tell you, my husband was hung over the day after New Year's because he did imbibe quite a bit on New Year's Eve, and um, he I wore this on New Year's Day because uh, I don't really drink, so I felt great, and he was like, oh my gosh. He had a headache, and something about this perfume was just making it so much worse because it, it it's just a strong fragrance. So um, with that being said, so Amberlicious is honey, benzoin, labdanum, musk, vanilla, sesame seed, caramel, rum, cinnamon, white orchid, sorry, white orchid, tonka bean, and amber accord. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, sweet, yummy amber. And this one has a ton of cinnamon in it. So that is Amberlicious from Dua. Next, we have one of my loves. I love this fragrance so much. I wore this to bed the other night and it's just such a gorgeous fragrance fragrance. This is called Velvet Amber Oud from a house called Rihanna and this can be found on Fragrance X for quite reasonable. This is a very beautiful, very Middle Eastern style fragrance and it is incredibly unique. I have nothing like this in my collection. It is this very, very strange mix of like Middle Eastern, like incense market. I don't want to say spice market because it's not spicy. It's more like a Middle Eastern incense. Like maybe I imagine going into like a temple would smell like. And like this fresh air, like this fresh air, fresh mountain air accord, I think is what it says it has. So there's this weird like fresh freshness with this really deep incense vibe. It's very slightly floral. It's so good, it's so strong. This lasts forever. Um, it projects like crazy. It's a total beast of a fragrance. Like will easily get you through a 12 hour work day. I mean, it's a beast. It's so good. It's so unique. I love it. Do I think it's safe? Probably not. I think I think somebody would either really love this like I do or really hate it because it's odd. I mean, really. So Velvet Amber Oud is amber, fresh mountain air, and floral notes. Um, gosh, it's so good though. I love it. Very unique so worth the price because it was so affordable, like 30 bucks for this huge bottle. Yeah, this is a 4.2 ounce bottle. I'll have this the rest of my life easily. But anyways, that is Velvet Amber Oud from Rihanna. And I wore that one because I, I had it in my best of 2020 video and I pulled it out and I was like, oh, I can't put it back until I wear it. It's so good. Okay, and then last but not least, I wore Tuberose Noir from, or Tuberose Noir from uh, Zara Emotions or Joe Loves. This is a good one. Um, there's something about it that I'm just not crazy about. It's, um, there's almost like a greenness to it. Or, and it's very, very sweet. Um, yeah, there's something about it that I don't love. This one will probably end up going up on my Mercari because I'm just not, just not crazy about it. I love tuberose, but I it might be the ylang ylang in here mixed with the tuberose that makes it almost like a cloying floral, if that makes any sense. Even though this doesn't last very long on the skin, maybe three to four hours. Um, this is one of the longer lasting in the line, but I still only got about four hours out of it or so before it was completely gone. Like not even just the skin scent, like gone, gone. Um, 
But like I say, there's something cloying about this and it's not like a sweet cloying, it's like a floral cloying. So yeah, it's not my favorite. Uh, tuberose Noir is Ylang Ylang, Tuberose, and Sandalwood. Um, pretty simple, but like I say, just not my favorite. So that is Tuberose Noir from Joe Loves or Zara Emotions. And that is going to be it for everything that I wore last week. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.